The nasal cannula is one of low flow oxygen delivery systems, uh, including nasal catheters and transtracheal catheters. We're not going to talk about the other two. We're going to focus on nasal cannula. So the standard nasal cannula is a low flow device, as I mentioned earlier. It can deliver an FiO2 anywhere from 24 to 44% at uh, supply flows uh, uh, ranging from one to eight liters per minute. Now, every time we increase the flow by one liter, what's going to happen is we're going to have a consequential increase of FiO2 by 4%. So look now, when we breathe room air, we have a 21% FiO2, or to be exact, 20.88%. Now, if we were to deliver one liter of oxygen into the patient through a nasal cannula, it increases the FiO2 by 4%. So one liter is intended to deliver approximately 24% of FiO2. And every time you increase it by one liter, it always increases the FiO2 by four, okay? So if you have an oxygen to a nasal cannula and you put it at two liters per minute, then it's going to increase by four again, so be 28. And as you could see, every liter increases the FiO2 by 4%. Now, the thing about nasal cannula is that it is very inconsistent during respiratory distress. Uh, nasal cannula is not recommended for acute severe hypoxemia, or patients that breathe on a hypoxic drive, where too high of an oxygen concentration may lead to respiratory depression. As you can see, a nasal cannula utilizes no reservoir of oxygen and relies on the patient's upper airway as an oxygen reservoir. So therefore, the amount of oxygen that eventually reaches the lung is dependent upon the depth and rate of breathing. Uh, a humidification device is recommended for flows greater than four liters per minute in order to ensure humidification of the dry inspired gas. Even with humidity, however, uh, flows of six to eight liters per minute can cause still nasal dryness and bleeding. Now, when do we use nasal cannulas. The best clinical indications for nasal cannula are for patients who have a relatively stable rep respiratory pattern, those who require low oxygen percentage or who need supplemental oxygen, uh, perhaps during a, a procedure or uh, most of the time for chronic home care. Now, there are various um, sizes and shapes of the uh, device. As you could see, it's uh, large as well as shapes uh, of the cannula or the prongs are different. And they're different in order to redirect the flow of oxygen into the nasal pharynx. One of the other things that we always forget in patients who are on nasal cannula is to monitor their ears or the area around the ears because this is an area where friction with the um, tubing usually occurs. So make sure that you support or prevent the skin breakdown.